Hi guys, my name is Tor Park. Welcome to our Vinyasa Flow practice. So before we start, maybe just take a moment to make sure that you have a little bit of space around your mat. Um, if you have a couple of bricks, maybe get a brick and maybe a strap. If you don't, don't worry, you can use a book, you can use a belt, you might not even need any props. The other thing you might want to have is um, maybe a pillow or a sofa cushion. And then once you're ready, let's start to find our way onto our back. So come to any comfortable supine position. You might want to just start in Shavasana with your legs extended, or it can be quite nice to have a bend in your knees. Take your feet mat distance apart. Now big toes turned in, heels turned out. Allow your knees to come in together. And just let your hands come to wherever they naturally land. So this might be down by your stomach, palms facing up. You might want to have one hand on your heart, one hand on your stomach. Whatever kind of feels natural for you. Then just close your eyes or soften your gaze. And let's begin by taking a couple of nice grounding breaths together. So taking a nice full inhale through your nose, really fill your lungs and then open your mouth to exhale. <sighs> Let's do that two more times. So use your inhale to really fill your lungs, draw the air to the back and sides of your body, and then open your mouth to exhale. <sighs> Last one. So deep inhale through the nose, deepest breath so far today, really fill your lungs, pause at the top of the inhale, and then completely exhale. And from here, starting to seal your lips and find a steady rhythm for your breath. Still breathing in and also out through the nose. Thinking about really filling your lungs, drawing the air right down to the back and sides of your lungs as we take a few moments to arrive on the mat. Get settled into the space and start to feel a little bit grounded. Perhaps take a moment to take a little scan of the body, noticing if there's any areas that could maybe do with a little bit of extra relief, a little extra softening today. And perhaps just direct your breath towards those areas. We're going to take a slightly deeper breath as we prepare to move. So if your legs are extended, start to draw them in. If your knees are bent, draw them in towards your chest and give yourself a little hug in. Maybe a little gentle rock from side to side, rolling along the base of the spine. And think about how you would like to make your way to seated. So you might want to take two or three rocks up and down your spine, taking hold of the backs of the thighs and just tuck your chin down towards your chest. Or perhaps just roll over to your right hand side and use your hands to guide you up to just any comfortable seated position. So I've come into Sukhasana or cross-legged. You might want to come into a different pose. Whatever works for you is fine. You might want to sit up onto a brick or perhaps that cushion that we have. And then allow your hands to rest down onto your thighs. If you have your palms face down, it can help you to feel a little bit more grounded. You might want to have your palms facing up. Perhaps coming into a chin mudra, so thumb and first finger together, and then all the other fingers extended nice and wide. But find a pose that works for you. And then close down your eyes or soften your gaze. And start to feel grounded down through the sitting bones, but find a little length within your spine. So as you inhale, sit up to your full height, extend through the crown of your head, and as you exhale, just let your shoulder blades draw down your back. While we're just taking a few moments here, perhaps give a little consideration as to your intention. So what brings you to the mat? Perhaps you're looking to find a little space just to do something for yourself. Take a little bit of time out of your day for yourself. 
that you just need a little bit of time to give yourself space to breathe. Or perhaps you really want to get some movement, some flow into the body. But as we move through our practice, come back to your intention as we let it inform the decisions that you make as we take ourselves through our practice. Again, inhaling to sit up a little bit taller. As you exhale, revolve your torso to your right. Bring your left hand to your right thigh, right hand behind you. Breathe into the side of your waist, chin slightly drawn down. Use your next inhale to come back to centre and your exhale to take you around to the other side. Think about rotating from relatively low in the spine. Again, use your inhale to bring it back to center and pause for the exhale. As you inhale, sweep your hands high, draw your palms together, and as you exhale, bring your hands down to the heart space. Allow your thumbs to lightly rest against your sternum as we sit here with, with Anjali Mudra. And with your hands, at the Anahata Chakra, or the place of love and compassion, let's set a dedication for our practice. So perhaps offering your practice up to someone that you love, maybe a cause that you believe in. Maybe offering your practice to someone that could do with a little bit of love or positive energy sending their way today. And perhaps that's you, in which case, please practice for yourself. When you're ready, let's make our way into tabletop. So place your hands on the mat, roll over your knees, or whatever works for you to come to tabletop. And we're going to begin with hands roughly shoulder distance apart, knees roughly hip distance apart. And starting to take ourselves through a couple of cat cows. So press into your hands, and as you inhale, lift your tailbone, shine your heart forward, look up. And as you exhale, starting the motion of the tailbone, draw the centre of the spine up to the sky, chin to chest as we come into our cat pose. Your inhale brings you back into cow and use your exhale to find your way back to cat. So thinking about working at the pace of your own breath, as you inhale into cow, feel your biceps spilling forward. And as you exhale into cat, really push the ground away. Think about finding space between your shoulder blades. Let's do one more like this. Inhaling the cow and then exhaling for cat. And so we take ourselves back into the tabletop. Just not to ask how your, your, your wrists are going to be. So maybe, maybe just your hand hanging around now. So it's in the same space along the long edges and that. Start to so move your shoulders, shoulders side by side. 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 slightly ahead of your shoulders, shoulders slightly ahead of your wrists, tuck your toes and exhale, downward facing dog. And straight away start to move in your dog, so bend one knee, extend the opposite heel down towards the mat, pause there and then take it over to the other side. Do that a couple of times on each side, maybe turn your head from side to side. Bring it back to that scan of the body that we did at the beginning of our practice. And if there were any areas that could do with that extra softening or extra release, then start to move into those areas. So maybe bringing a quite a big bend into your knees, perhaps a little bit of forwards and backwards motion, maybe move your hips. 
If you're doing something that's a little bit one-sided, then make sure you've evened out both sides. And then find a little bit of calm, stillness in your downward facing dog. On your next inhale, lift up onto your tiptoes and with soft knees, take little baby steps, walking your feet up towards the top of the mat. Feet roughly hip distance apart. Take hold of opposite elbows and just enjoy a little dangling down here, maybe a sway from side to side. Nod your head yes, yeah, shake your head no, maybe. Then release your hands down to wherever it is that they come to. Take a nice deep inhale through your nose and as you exhale, flutter your lips. Let's do that one more time. It's great for releasing tension in the jaw, so inhaling through your nose. And as you exhale, and from here, really press down into your feet, the heel, the big toe man, the little toe side of your foot, and nice and slowly with soft knees, roll up through your spine, take it vertebra by vertebra. When you get to the top, give your shoulders a little roll, then come to stand at the top of your mat, so big toes touching heels very slightly apart. If that doesn't feel comfortable, take your feet, parallel, with a little bit of space between them. As you inhale, draw your shoulders up, and as you exhale, roll them back and down. Extend through your fingertips, extend through the crown of your head, standing tall here in Tadasana or Mountain Pose. Let's start to bring in a little bit of internal engagement, so feel the arches of your feet lift. Slight inward rotation at the tops of the thighs, so as you do that, you might find the kneecaps start to lift. Starting to bring in our Muna Banda. So this is that muscle between the legs. It's the pelvic floor and the perineum. Start to lift it slightly in and up. Draw your belly button in and up towards your spine, engaging our Uddiyana Banda. So a slight concave feeling at the solar plexus. As you inhale, sweep your hands high, Urdhva Hastasana. And as you exhale, bring your hands to the heart space, Damasana. Taking a nice deep inhale through the nostrils as you exhale, open your mouth as though you're trying to steam up an imaginary mirror. <sighs> Again, inhaling through the nose, but as you exhale, also breathe out through your nose and make the same sound. So we're looking to bring in our Ujjayi breath, the victorious breath with the oceanic sound that warms us from the inside out, gives us structure from the inside out. So if ever you feel your mind wandering, bring it back to our Ujjayi breath. When you're ready, as you inhale, lift your hands, Urdhva Hastasana. As you exhale with soft knees, hinge at the hips and lead with your chest as you forward fold, coming into Uttanasana. Bring your hands flat next to your feet, so you're going to probably need to bend your knees a little bit more than you typically would. As you inhale, bring your hands to your shins and look up. And as you exhale, plant your hands down and step your right foot to the back of the mat. Lower down your right knee, untuck your toes, then hook your thumbs. And as you inhale, we're coming in for Anjani Asana. So think about really lifting your heart, lengthening your tailbone. And as you exhale, bring your hands back down to the mat and step back to downward facing dog. Take a full inhale. Exhale. Push the ground away, find length in your spine. Don't worry about having a bit of a bend in your knees. Bring your feet a little closer together at the back of the mat. Then as you inhale, lift your right leg, but just to hip height, so push through your heel. As you exhale, bring your knee towards your nose, dome your shoulders and place your foot between your hands. Bring your left foot to join it. And as you inhale, lift your hands, lift your heart. Exhale, Damasiti. Take an inhale, exhale. As you inhale, lift your hands, Urdhva Hastasana. As you exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale to a flat back, so hands to shins or just leave your fingertips on the mat as you look up. As you exhale, step your left foot to the back of the mat. Lower down your left knee, untuck your toes. Take the other hook of your thumbs and as you inhale, lift your heart and journey asana. As you exhale, bring your hands down and step back to our downward facing dog. Yeah, and take a little moment here to find a little bit of length within the spine. 
push the ground away and think about finding space between your shoulder blades. So it's like external rotation at the tops of the arms, but keep your hands grounded. As before, bring your feet a little bit closer together at the back of the mat. And as you inhale, lift your left leg. Again, just take it to hip height. We're looking to find length rather than height. Push through your heel. And as you exhale, bring your left knee towards your nose. Dome your shoulders and place your left foot between your hands. Bring your right foot to join it. And when you're ready, use an inhale to come back up to Bahasasana. Exhale, Damastiti. Bring your hands down by your thighs. Take a breath. When you're ready, as you inhale, lift your hands. Maybe take a little back bend. We find length in the tailbone. And as you exhale, lead with your chest as you forward fold, coming into Uttanasana. Inhale to a flat back, look up. And as you exhale, step it back to a high plank. Again, think about finding extension through the crown of the head. Push through your heels. And almost as though you're trying to use the front of your body to lift it up. Find space between your shoulder blades, same as we did when we were in our cat pose. So when we come through our first vinyasas, I'm going to take us through a couple of different variations. If you want to do something else, go for it. I don't mind. So if you're with me, take an inhale as you exhale, lower down knees, chest and chin. Keep your hips high and your elbows drawn back. As you inhale, snake up for a low cobra, untuck your toes, draw your sternum forward. As you exhale, lower down, take it to child's pose. Take a breath here, and you can always come to child's pose whenever you need a moment for yourself. As you inhale, come back to tabletop, tuck your toes, exhale, downward facing dog. Take an inhale, exhale. Again, thinking about finding length within the spine. Draw your um, thigh bones towards the back wall. So really thinking about using your quads to push your legs back. Bring a slight bend into your knees, then tilt your pelvis, take your sit bones a little bit higher. And then thinking about taking your heels back down towards the earth. So your heels may never reach the ground because of the shape of your ankle bones, but that's the direction that we're looking to take them. On an inhale, lift up onto your tiptoes, soften your knees. With a long neck, look to the top of the mat and then either walk, step or jump to the top of the mat. Inhale to a flat back, exhale to fold. As you inhale, sweep your hands high, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Damastiti. Bring your hands back down by your thighs, take an inhale, exhale. This time we're inhaling for chair pose. So sweep your hands high, lower your hips, bend your knees. Have your pinky fingers slightly turned in and look to the space between your hands. Take an inhale, exhale, forward fold. Inhale to a flat back as you exhale, step back to a high plank. Take an inhale here as you exhale, lower down your knees. Then bring your chest down to elbow height, no lower. Untuck your toes and inhale for a slightly modified upward facing dog. Draw your sternum forward and your shoulders back. As you exhale, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. If you inhale, extend your right leg. If you exhale, extend your right foot behind your right hand. Lower your left heel to the mat, set your foundation. And as you inhale, lower up the warrior and run right foot down and left heel forward. As you exhale, bring your head to the mat, set that back to the front leg. Upward facing dog. Exhale for downward facing dog. 
Let's give ourselves a moment to come back to the breath, back to the bandas, and back to your staff. Think about drawing your belly button in and up towards your spine, engaging our Uddiyana Bandha. Really push the ground away, find length within the spine. Fabulous. One more breath here. On an inhale, lift up onto your tiptoes, soften your knees, look to the top of the mat, and then either walk, step, or float, hips high to the top. Inhale, flat back, exhale to fold. Let's inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold, hips high. Inhale to a flat back as you exhale, step it back to plank or float back to Chaturanga with bent elbows. Flow through your vinyasa and exhale to downward facing dog. When you're ready, as you inhale, step your right foot forward, come straight in for warrior one. Your exhale brings your hands to the mat. Keep the exhale going as you come through chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. Our inhale brings us to cobra or upward facing dog, shoulders back. Exhale, downward facing dog. On your next inhale, step your left foot forward, warrior one. Your exhale brings your hands back down with control, step back to plank. Don't let your elbows come out to the side as we come through our vinyasa. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's inhale for one. Exhale. Push the ground away as you inhale for two. Exhale. Let's bring it in for three. Exhale. Last breath here. When you're ready, as you inhale, lift onto your tiptoes, soften your knees, look to the top of the mat, and then walk, step, or float on up to the top. Inhale to a flat back, exhale to fold. Inhale, chair pose, ankles, knees, and thighs together. Maybe sit a little lower on your chair. Take an inhale. As you exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale to a Flat back, draw your shoulder blades down your back, and as you exhale, step back to plank or float it back for chaturanga. Come through your vinyasa, and we'll all meet back in downward facing dog. When you're ready, as you inhale, right foot forward, warrior one. Your exhale brings your hands to the mat through chaturanga. Inhale for cobra or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Your inhale steps your left foot forward, warrior one. As you exhale, bring it back down, take it with control as you flow through your vinyasa and find your way back to downward facing dog. Again, let's give ourselves a little moment to come back to the breath, back to the bandas and back to your staff. Think about that length within your spine, length in the backs of the legs almost as though you're trying to draw your thigh bones to the back of the room. And find a single point of focus. So take your drishti or your gaze, perhaps towards your knees, maybe to your navel or perhaps between your feet. But find a single place for your concentration. Length at the back of the neck. One more breath here. Then when you're ready, as you inhale, lift up onto your tiptoes, soften your knees, look to the top of the mat, walk, step, or float on up to the top. Inhale to a flat back, exhale to fall. Let's inhale to chair pose, Utkatasana. Sit a little bit lower on your chair, draw your palms together at the heart space. As you inhale, find a bit more length in your spine, and as you exhale, revolve around to your right. So bring your left elbow to the outside of your right thigh, and look over your right shoulder. If your left knee has crept a little bit further forwards than your right knee, then just draw your left hip back a little bit. One more breath here, then use an inhale to come back to centre. If you're looking to challenge yourself, stay low. Otherwise, just stand up for a moment to release your thighs. If you stood up, take an inhale, exhale, straight back down. Let's all bring the palms together at the heart space. Inhale to lengthen your spine as you exhale, revolve around to your left. Right elbow to the outside of the right thigh. One long line from elbow to elbow. 
and find enough rotation at the chest that you have your hands at the heart space. One more breath here. Use an inhale to come back to centre and as you exhale, bring your hands to the mat, lift your hips, Uttanasana. Inhale to a flat back, as you exhale, step it back to plank or float it back for Chaturanga. Come through your Vinyasa and we're all going to meet back in Downward Facing Dog. Take an inhale, exhale. As you inhale, extend your right leg. As you exhale, draw your right knee towards your nose, pause here with your shoulders above your wrists and then with control place your foot between your hands. Keep drawing the inner thighs together, have your back heel high and use an inhale to come up for crescent lunge, heart above hips. Take an inhale here as you exhale, we're opening out into warrior two. So hopefully you should have landed with your front heel in line with the arch of your back foot. Again, heart above hips, really reach through your hands. Think about having your right knee above its ankle. Flip your front palm as you inhale, reach forward. And as you exhale, reverse your warrior. Lift your chest up towards the sky. Excellent. Don't let your right knee travel back with you. Sometimes mine does, but it's not meant to. Take an inhale here, and as you exhale, bring your right forearm to your right thigh. Sweep your left hand forward and revolve your chest around towards the sky. One long line from the edge of the foot through to the tips of the fingers. Your left hand should be active here. And I quite like having um, arm on thigh because I feel like it gives more space for the rotation. When you're ready, use your Mula Bandha and an inhale to come back up to Warrior Two. Option to come through a one-legged Chaturanga here. So it's optional, you don't have to do it, but I'll talk us through if you would like to give it a go. So let's take an inhale as you exhale, cartwheel your hands forward, frame the front foot. Lift your right leg, point through your toes. Still don't come lower than your elbows. Inhale to upward facing dog, right foot down and tuck your left toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's take an inhale. Exhale. One more breath here and let it go. As you inhale, extend your left leg. As you exhale, knee to nose, dome your shoulders, pause with your shoulders ever so slightly forward of your wrists and then with control place your left foot between your hands. Back heel high, back leg strong, pull your inner thighs together and as you inhale, crescent lunge. Pause for the exhale. Take an inhale and as you exhale open it out into our warrior two. Check your feet, if your back foot is slightly angled towards the back of your mat just turn it in so it's slightly angled towards the front instead. Left knee above the left ankle, heart above the hip. Flip your front palm as you inhale, reach forward, and as you exhale, reverse your warrior. You have, have your right hand lightly resting on your right leg, but make sure there's no pressure there. We're looking to use the energy to draw it up towards the sky. Find length on both sides of the torso. Take an inhale, <coughs> excuse me. As you exhale, bring your left forearm to your left thigh, left fingertips active. Sweep your right hand forward and revolve your chest around towards the sky. And think about having one long line from the edge of the foot all the way along the leg, the torso, and through your fingertips. Last breath here. It's our Mula Bandha and an inhale that draws us back up for Warrior Two. Pause for the exhale. Whatever you did on the other side, same thing for this side. So if you're coming through our one-legged chaturanga, then you're with me. If you're doing something else, go for it. Take an inhale as you exhale, cartwheel your hands forward, frame the front foot. Extend your left leg, point through your toes. Come through your chaturanga with control. And you're going to bring your left leg down to the top of your right toes. So you're coming to up and facing dog. Exhale, down and up and facing dog. We're going to dedicate one moment here to Okay. 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 Okay.
upward facing dog. If you want to do that again, we are inhaling to upward facing dog. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. If you're in child's pose, meet us back in downward facing dog. On an inhale, lift up onto your tiptoes, soften your knees, look to the top of the mat, and then walk, step, or float to the top. Inhale to a flat back, exhale to fold. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. And as you exhale, stand up, Tadasana. Fabulous. So draw your palms together at the heart space. Stay facing the front of your mat but transfer your weight into your right foot. As you inhale, lift your left knee. And then as you exhale, turn your leg out to the side. We're making our way into tree pose. So you can either just bring your foot to a kickstand, you can bring your foot to your calf, or use your hand to draw your left foot as high up your right leg as you can. Wherever your foot is, push your leg and your foot together. Find length in your tailbone. Keep extending through the crown of your head. And then just check your breathing. Sometimes when we come into particularly standing balances, we inadvertently hold our breath. Draw your belly button in and up towards your spine, engaging our Uddiyana Bandha. So quite often I hear People tell me to kind of gaze at a spot when coming into a pose like this. But actually, if you can steady your pelvis and engage your bandits, then all the balance that you need is already within you. And if you're feeling particularly stable, then I'd like to invite you to close your eyes. Take one final breath in. As you've closed your eyes, open them again, and we're going to use an inhale to bring the left knee back to center. Take an inhale here, then as you exhale, step your left foot to the back of the mat, and inhale, crescent lunge. Fabulous. Take an inhale here, then as you exhale, we're coming back into warrior two. So again, just thinking about finding a little bit more length at the front of the thigh. So could we come a little bit lower here? But even though I'm saying could we, if that is going beyond what feels comfortable for you, goes beyond just felt sensation, come out. Roll your shoulders up, back and down, draw your shoulder blades together and take your drishti or gaze to your front middle finger. Really good. Flip the front palm as you inhale, come forwards, and as you exhale, we're coming into reverse warrior again. Option one, stay as you are, or you might want to bring the binders, so wrap your left arm around your back. Aim to take hold of the inside of the right thigh. And the idea with this is that we can get a bit more external rotation. So I think about having your right knee tracking in line with the outside edge of your right foot. Keep lifting your chest towards the sky, so don't lose the intention of our pose, which is a side stretch. And if you want something extra, lift up the heel of your right foot. So it just makes it a little bit more challenging for the calf. If you've come into any variations, come out. So release your heel, release your bind. We are back into our warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. We're making our way back into extended side angle, but this time we're going to bring the right hand down inside the right foot and bring your left hand overhead. Now, this is where you might want to use a brick, or you can come onto your fist. Fabulous. Revolve your chest towards the sky. And we are all going to give a go to the bind. So wrap your right arm as far under your right leg as you can then take hold of your left hand or your left wrist and then look over your left shoulder. Sometimes if you take the bind, you come forwards a little bit. So just draw your left shoulder back so we've got space across the front of the chest. If you're in the bind, stay in the bind. You might want to, as a little catch it, make it a little bit looser. We're all going to look down towards the right big toe and then step the left 
foot to the top of the mat. If you're in the bind, stay in the bind. We're all going to transfer our weight into the left foot. And then we're going to start thinking about making our way to standing. So if you're in the bind, stay in the bind. If you're not, don't worry, you're with me. Once you've made your way to standing, if you're in the bind, stay there. Otherwise, left hand to left hip, right hand to right knee. If you're in the bind, take an inhale. As you exhale, lift your right leg. If you're with me, take an inhale. As you exhale, open out your knee to the side. Only your knee though, don't let your hip travel too. And then we are all going to look over our left shoulder. Check your breath. If you inhale, come back to centre and we are all going to come out the same way that we came in. So if you're in the bind still, lower your right foot back down to the mat and then we are all going to step the left foot to the back of the mat. If you're still in the bind, come out now, frame the front foot and we're taking ourselves through a vinyasa. So step your left, right foot back, knees, chest, chin and cobra or chaturanga and upward facing dog. Or you can just do a couple of cat cows if you prefer. Just getting a little bit of flow. It doesn't really matter what you do. It can just be quite nice to get that flow into the body. Let's take a breath and exhale. Nice. So we're making our way back to the top of the mat. So as ever, you can walk, you can step, you can jump. Just find your way there. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale to fold. Inhale, chair pose, and exhale to stand up, Tanasana. Let's get ready for our tree pose on the other side. So draw your palms together at the heart space, transfer your weight into your left foot, and as you inhale, lift your right knee. Open out your knee to the side, and whatever you did on the other side, same thing for this side. So bring your foot to a kickstand, to your calf, or to the top of your left leg. So I quite like Anjali Mudra, it kind of helps me feel a little bit more balanced. But if you would prefer to take a different variation, you might want to take an inhale and as you exhale, open up your branches. Again, take a moment to make sure that you're breathing, Uddiyana Bandha engaged, have good connection with your foot and your leg, that's also going to really help you with your balance. If you've opened up your branches, bring them back to Anjali Mudra. Then when you're ready, we're going to bring the right knee forward. And as you exhale with control, step your right foot to the back of the mat. As we inhale, crescent lunge, draw your inner thighs together, push through the heel of your back foot. And then when you're ready, we're opening out into our warrior two. Same as before, think about finding length within the thigh. Check your stance, so our foundation is so important. You have to have your left foot facing forwards and your back foot heel, well, the front, the heel of the front foot aligned with the arch of the back foot. Find space across the front of the body. Flip your front palm, inhale to reach forward, exhale to reverse your warrior. Again, don't let your left knee travel back with you. If you did on the other side, same thing for this side. We're wrapping the right arm around your back. Take hold of the inside of the left thigh. And whether you've got the bind or not, think about moving your left knee to the little toe side of your left foot. Find length on both sides of the torso. Really lift your chest to the sky. And if you did on the other side, same thing for this side. Think about lifting up your left heel. Take it really high. Release your heels, release your bind. And it's our inhale that brings us back to warrior two. Take an inhale here and as you exhale, feel you your left hand inside of your left foot. Don't, don't let your hips come out to the side here. When you're in your left leg, start to take the line. So bring your left arm oh, oh, under oh, your left leg as you can. Take hold of your right hand with your right 
hand to right hip and left hand to left knee. If you're in the bind, take an inhale and as you exhale, lift your left leg. If you're with me, take an inhale as you exhale, open out your knee to the side and then we are all going to check our breath and look over the right shoulder. Keep drawing up the quad of your standing leg. We're looking to have one long line from ankle to knee to hip through the crown of the head. Nice. It's our inhale that brings us back to centre. Then same as before, carefully come out the same way that you came in. So bring your left foot back down, step your right foot to the back of the mat. If you're still in the bind, now is the time to release. Frame your front foot, step back to plank and flow through your vinyasa. Take a moment to find your breath and make your way back to downward facing dog. Nice. When you're ready, as you inhale, extend your right leg. So take it really high, then bend your knee. And we're looking to open up the hip, so bring your right foot towards your glute and then spin on the ball of your left foot transfer your weight into your right sorry your left hand and bring your right foot to the outside of the mat as we make our way into wild thing so your left foot should be grounded and your right heel should be high lift your hips lift your heart and then we are very simply going to sit down so you should now be facing the back of your mat. If you've come off the mat, just come back to centre a little bit. And then we're going to make our way into Janu Sirshasana. So allow your right knee to come down to the mat and connect the sole of your right foot to the inside of your left leg. Make sure you're sitting comfortably. You might want to bring a brick underneath your right knee if you need a little bit more height there. And then turn your torso to face your flexed left toes. As you inhale, lift and lengthen, and as you exhale, hinge at the hips and draw your sternum towards your toes. Let your hands come to wherever they land. So this is where you might want to use a strap. So you can either hold on to your foot, your shin, or you can take a strap around your foot. It's just nice to find a circle of energy. As you inhale, ease out a little bit, and as you exhale, lift your ribs away from your hips an option to release your head down. Last breath here. Then release your strap, your foot or your shin, bring your hands either side of your calf and as you inhale, slowly roll up through your spine and make your way back to seated. If you have a brick underneath your right knee, just move it out of the way for a moment. Place your hands behind you to give yourself a little bit of, um, to help you to balance basically. Then keep your left leg straight and as you inhale, lift it up. So a bit of core work going on here. Draw your palms together at the heart space in Anjali Mudra. Sit up tall, lift your leg high. Then bend your left knee, come onto your right hip and move your left leg behind you. So, you can keep your leg bent and come into deer pose. So maybe just move your right leg a little bit further towards the center of the mat and then extend forwards. 
or we can come into pigeon pose, in which case extend your left leg long behind you. You might want to bring a brick or a pillow underneath your right hip and then just make sure that you have engagement through your right foot. So flex your right foot, push through the heel. Check that your left heel is in line with the left sit bone. Sometimes when we move it back, it kind of creeps over to the side a little bit. Find length at the lower back. As you inhale, puff your chest up towards the sky. And as you exhale, lengthen your torso forwards as we come into pigeon pose. Ekapada Raja Kapatasana 1. You might want to just come onto your forearms, or you might want to extend your arms all the way out. It can be quite nice to rest your forehead onto the mat or onto a brick. If you don't have a brick, then you can stack your fists one on top of the other and just rest your forehead onto your hands. It's just, it can be quite nice to find a little connection for the Ajna Chakra, it helps to feel a little bit grounded. Still have light engagement through our Uddiyana Banda. Last breath in. Then slide your hands underneath your shoulders. And really slowly as you inhale, roll up through the spine, bring your head up last. Then tuck your left toes under and step back into downward facing dog. So you might want to take a vinyasa here or you might want to just have a little bit of a pedal out of your feet. So just think about what feels right for you. Bring it back to your intention, how your body is feeling today. And then once you've done your vinyasa, find your way back into downward facing dog. You should still be facing the back of your mat. When you're ready as you inhale, extend your left leg. Bend your knee, take your left knee really high and then again we're going to start to make our way into wild thing. So very carefully adjust your right foot and your hands. Bring your left foot to the outside of your mat and lift your hips really high. Take your chest high. Excellent. Last breath. And then sit down. So again, we should be facing the front of our mats again. Right leg extended and allow your left knee to come down to the ground. Connect the sole of your left foot to the inside of your right thigh. Again, you might want to get a couple of props here if you did on the other side. It might feel different on this side. Turn your torso to face your flexed right toes. As you inhale, lift and lengthen. And as you exhale, hinge at the hips and draw your sternum towards your toes. Again, let your hands come to wherever they naturally land. So your shin, your foot, or maybe using your strap. As you inhale, ease out a little bit. And as you exhale, lift your ribs away from your hips. Find length on the sides of your waist. And you might find that you have a little bit more space within your pose. And as before, if you want to bring a little bit of flexion into your spine, then just allow your head to soften down. But it's more about softening than kind of pulling it or making it move anywhere. Release your foot or your strap, bring your hands either side of your calves and it's the inhale that slowly rolls us back up. Same as before, we're going to come into that bit of core work. So you might want to bring your hands straight into Anjali Mudra or you might want to have your hands behind you as we did before. When you're ready, use an inhale to lift up your right leg. Keep it lifted, push through that heel, palms together. Take an inhale, as you exhale, bend your right knee and start to move it behind you. Whatever you did on the other side, same thing for this side. So maybe just staying with deer pose and extending your torso forwards, or perhaps getting ready for our pigeon pose. So make sure that your leg is extended directly behind you. Don't worry too much about the angle of your left shin, just whatever serves you. So you might want to have it 
parallel with the short edge of the mat or maybe a little bit further towards you. If you need to um, get some props underneath your left hip, please do. And then as you inhale, walk your hands back, puff your chest up towards the sky, lengthen your tailbone. And as you exhale, lengthen your torso forward. As before, maybe just pause here on your forearms, or you might want to extend your arms all the way out. And again, it can, can be quite nice to find some sort of connection with the Arjun Chakra, maybe in the mat, maybe a brick brick, or perhaps a few things of your fist. And again, again, a bit of external rotation at the outer left, left hip, hip. So even the other toe, 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 Once you've done that, bring your knees down to the mat and as you exhale, take yourself into child's pose. On an inhale, sit up onto your knees and then bring your hips over to one side and bring your legs forwards. So I wanted to just close out with a little inversion. Now, if you've practiced me before, you're going to know that my favourite inversion is the Parita Karani. And particularly if you're at home and you're near a wall, you can definitely just stick your legs straight up against the wall. So if you're doing that, then make sure you have a brick or a pillow to hand. Just have your back to the wall and then roll up. Take your legs up, have a little lift to the hips and bring a um, cushion underneath. But make sure your sacrum is supported. You can have your arms extended. If you have headstand in your practice and you want to come into that, then please do. Otherwise, I'm going to talk us through shoulder stand. So, coming into shoulder stand, take yourself onto your back. Now, make sure your elbows are in line with your body. Take your feet overhead into plow. Bring your hands to your back and then lift your feet up. I invite you to close your eyes and just feel yourself moving in to a long line. Sometimes if we look up our feet, we find that your body is slightly bowed. Walk your hands a little further towards your shoulder blades and you are gonna know how this feels better than me. So if it doesn't feel right, Take your feet back overhead into plow and come out. If you feel that, that kind of bone at the top of the, um, the spine, the bottom of the neck is getting a bit nobbled, this maybe is not the pose for you. But it can be a really nice one for finding a little bit of upside down time. If you're in Viparita Karani, then you're welcome to stay there for a little bit longer. It's one of the few inversions that have quite a nice calming effect on the body. Inversions tend to be quite energizing. If you're in shoulder stand, take your feet back overhead into plow. If your toes touch the ground behind you, then you can release your back and then interlace your hands along the mat, press your arms into the mat. And keep lifting your hips high. And then we are all going to find our way back down to the mat. So if you're in Viparita Karani, then take your knees over to the side and roll back over and find your way back to the center of your mat. If you're in shoulder stand, release your hands and then very slowly 
So use your arms like brakes. You might want to hold on to the edges of the mat as well. Slowly roll on down. And then we're going to find our way to happy baby. So to start by just taking hold of the backs of your thighs. Draw your knees towards your armpits. Our aim here is to have the spine lengthened along the mat. Then flex your feet, push through your heels. Either continue to hold the backs of your legs or take hold of the outer edges of your feet. Think about having your ankles above your knees and your knees moving towards your armpits. Have a slight nod to the chin, find length at the back of the neck. And it can be quite nice to have a little rock from side to side. Maybe even take hold of your big toes with your peace fingers and open your legs out into a giant V shape. And then whenever you're ready, slowly bend in your knees. Then either extend or cactus your arms. Take an inhale and as you exhale, let your knees come down to the right hand side. You might want to adjust your hips slightly over towards the left an option to turn your head to the left as well, in which case please lift your head up and then turn it towards the left. It just helps to keep neck in line with spine. Breathe into the side of your waist. Use an inhale to come back to centre, adjust your hips if you did on the other side and use an exhale to take your knees to the left. Again, yeah, maybe just move your hips slightly to the right. Option to turn your head to the right as well. And then let's find our way back to centre. And then if there's any kind of final moves you'd like to make, maybe just a little wiggle. It doesn't even really need to be a yoga move. You might want to just have a little wiggle, perhaps a nice deep sigh, and then Find your way to our Shavasana. So allow your feet to just flop out to wherever it is they want to come to. Let your hands rest down by your sides, palms facing up. Then close your eyes, soften your gaze, and feel your whole body relax. Feel the hips heavy, your spine melting into the mat. Take a moment to release your tongue and soften all the muscles around your eyes. Release the space between your eyes and just feel any little wrinkles in the forehead melting away. So you are very welcome to just stay here in Shavasana for a little bit longer. The nice thing about being at home, you can really take your time. Or if you are ready to come out, then start with just wiggling fingers and toes. As you inhale, extend your arms overhead and have a full body stretch out. Roll over to your right hand side and just take a moment there to really find a little bit of calm. Perhaps bring back to mind whoever it was that you dedicated your practice to. And thank you for practicing it back to you. It's a really wonderful thing to send out that positive energy into the world. Use your hands to guide you back to seated. Draw your palms back to Anjali Mudra. Take a moment to thank yourself for coming to the mat, for practicing with such intention. Thank you as ever for practicing with me and with more yoga, and I hope to see you again soon. Namaste. So thank you. If anyone has any questions or anything I can help with, then you can find me on Instagram, I'm Tor Park, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Enjoy the rest of your day.